Molly. Hey, Dr. Molly Miller. Hi, Mr. Zane Carney. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm, uh, yeah, it's so nice to be here and to be talking with you. It's so nice to see you. Yeah, I played some tennis this morning and played some guitar, and now I'm here. How was your day? I love it. I played some Mario tennis today, which is less <laughs> athletic, but I'm addicted to it, so it's cool. It's just Cause, as important. Yeah, because COVID, yay. Yeah. Finding ways to come to, to um, uh, deal, and I think that's kind of what we're talking about today, is how do we process this musically and continue to work in this climate? Yeah, what have you been doing? Like, what... Ha- <sighs> Because you, you know, I've seen you online, like you're doing Twitch, you're doing a lot. You know, it started about four years ago. I got sick when I was doing this tour in Germany. I was on tour over there as like a solo, my first solo headlining thing. And I got sick over there and I came back and had to do a few tests for a couple months. And as I was kind of coming back from that fatigue, I went on Periscope and Instagram Live and got somewhat of an idea of what streaming is and then went back on tour and forgot about it. Yeah, once this tour st- or, or this quarantine started, I went, all right, is that streaming thing still a thing? So I started looking to different avenues and found Twitch and have been just going crazy on Twitch the past, I don't know, four months. Yeah, it seems like you're slaying it. I was like talking to you today, like seeing what you're doing. I was like, I feel like I need to get Twitch and I need to get a camera because oh, you look I can- amazing right now. Girl, if you want, if you have any questions <laughs> on cameras, I spent basically three weeks straight going down a YouTube rabbit hole. Cool. And I totally got you if you want to know what to get or, or what to stay away from. Yeah. You look amazing it. though. This whole setup's great. And you have the guitars in the background, the pro mic and the whole, and the amp I see down there and the whole jazz. Yeah, I got a couple amps back here. Yeah. I mean, like I, I when I, this happened, I, I realized quickly like, oh, I'm going to have to do a lot of live stream-esque stuff. So I did get a light. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I'm, I, you know, we all like became zoom masters, right? You know, it's like, Oh, this is where I place the mic and this is where I put my interface volume and whatnot. So yeah, a lot of live streams to keep, I mean, it's just what we do. We have to Has do that it. been your main expression the past six months is live streaming or has it been remote recording or kind of all of it? All of it. So I've been doing a ton of teaching as well. You know, I'm the, the chair of the guitar department over at LAC and we've had you there and we need to have you back. Oh, I'd love to. Um, so teaching has been a really cool way to connect with people. That's one Avenue, but also a ton of, yeah, like live streams and connecting with people like that and doing remote recordings. And then, like we said, right before today, uh, I've been working with different guitar companies, which has been so cool. So I did something with Taylor and, um, Disney and guitar center. It was like a joint brand thing. Um, and a song, a few songs that I worked on came out today. So cool. Yeah. So that's also been keeping me occupied. I feel like, you know, where I think we all are probably pretty goal oriented where it's like, okay, I'm going to work on this song. I'm going to work on this record. I'm going to work on these projects that keep us sane or else we're just, I feel like I flounder if I don't have projects to keep me uh, focused. Yeah. Same here. Yeah. There, there's that, I don't know. I have this, this bicameral mind where part of me just wants to relax and rest and eat Doritos and Cheetos and, you know, just, I mean, always forget the quarantine. That's been a part of me. And then there's this other rubber band snap. That's just, you got to get out there. You got to make something of yourself, kiddo. Um, I, can't, I can't see you. I feel like you're a go. You like are on the go. You would think um, I'm still learning. I mean, I, that whole thing people talk about with everyone has their own private personal journey. Mine would absolutely be um, hopefully one day learning how to work a little smarter and less hard. I don't know if you know this about me, Molly, but I grew up, I was a child actor on a sitcom. Yeah. So from age seven to 12, I was going to school one day a week and then working from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. while doing schoolwork. And then I'd come home and do homework. So I think in that crucial part of my developmental stage, it was like, oh, you work all day, every day, all the time on multiple projects. So I'm still learning how to kind of step back because frankly, I've worked hard the past six years and really been busy during the quarantine with my streaming and remote recordings, but there still is a goal and a jewel in my, in my mind that I'm seeking. And I think it's there for me, but I, I constantly have been uh, having to re guide myself like, Hey, make your own music. Hey, you know, finish your own records that have been sitting on the shelf for seven years in your computer. So I'm, I'm still learning that, but I'm really grateful. I found a way to, to stay busy and productive during this quarantine. It's been crazy. I would imagine, 
Yeah, sorry, go ahead. Obviously, and you've been so busy too. You've been that Disney Taylor thing. Just for anyone who's not watched it, you gotta go to Molly's Instagram and watch it. It's so beautiful, and the song, the arrangement's so beautiful, and oh. everything about it is just so compelling. Thank you. Yeah, that was Fair Necessities. And I, Chim Chimmery and Rainbow Connection, they're coming out too. They're, I think they're actually all out right now, but just the Bare Necessities video on Instagram. But they're all out in the world. So I was excited about that. But I was going to say to you, because I feel like like what you're saying resonates with me, but how do you untrain yourself when you're probably like your whole life, you're used to just going and doing. And I know it, with myself, like I push myself to the max and I love to see how much I can pile on and how much I can do. Right. Yeah. That's, that's a good question. I mean, I, I think in general, my body's giving me that limit of like, did you get sleep time, go to sleep. Um, but, um, I don't know. God, I, to be frank, I'm still finding out the answer to that, but I think both of us are very fortunate because I, I guess I can only speak for myself, but being able to survive at such a time like this, where for me, the past 10 years, whether it was, uh, Broadway stuff, the, the touring with the Langs and the Mayors and stuff, or my solo touring, or pretty much live performance is my income. You know, 75 wow. to 90% was live. I loved doing session work, but most times when I get a call for a session, I was on tour with someone and I'd say, oh, shoot, here's a friend who could do it. Or um, So it's been interesting. There was some stress of like, how is this going to pan out? Um, but I love what you have been doing. And I, I guess I'm grateful with what I've stumbled into, which is at the worst case scenario, I'm still finding a way to provide for myself. And I think a lot of that has to do with some of the tools you have, like you're a site reader, you can teach, you know theory, like you have so many reasons why someone would hire Molly. And I'm hopeful that I also have something similar. Like, oh. hey, if, if you need a jazz session remotely, I can do that. If you need me to transcribe something for you and orchestrate it, I can do that. You know, yeah. we're lucky that we've cared about that training, I think. Yeah. I'm, you can't be one thing in this climate. And I think the quarantine and COVID has only proved that more so as guitarists. It's like, I mean, you could just be a performing guitarist or just a teacher, but having these different things, I think makes it so you're more resilient. Something that we would just been talking about right before, which is resilience. Yes. Right. Yeah. Cause it is, I, I mean, I, I have a question for you though. When, the, when it first started, was your first two weeks like mine, I was like, all right, movies and bunker style. Or were you like, oh crap, time to work. What, what was your experience? Um, okay, a couple of things. First of all, it was a lot of, um, suddenly I was crying and I had, it was like, I was like mourning something, you know, I was like, I was supposed to go to Hawaii with Jason. I played with mm. And then from Hawaii, go on like a couple week tour with my brother. And I was so ready. And then I was like, oh no, actually your flight tomorrow, not happening. By the way, Molly's referring to Jason Mraz, who she plays guitar with. And it's what a beautiful project that's been. I've been I loving love watching project. that. Oh, Thank you. it's I so good for your, you are so good for each other too. Because you're able to really be yourself in his band. Well, that's like, I saw you play with John Mayer at the Hollywood Bowl. And I remember seeing you and it wasn't like you were like playing John Mayer or playing some other guitarist. You were being Zane Carney. And I remember mm -hmm. you taking like some solos and I was just like, <laughs> you just <laughs> like to the moon, you know? Well, that's how I've seen, I've watched a lot of videos of you doing stuff. And when you have your solos, I'm like, okay, they're really melodic you're always using interesting notes that make sense, but also like, oh, that's not what everyone does. This is a Molly melody and a Molly story that's being told. And Jason's going, yep, I want, I hired her. I want that. It's so cool. I feel, I feel like, like, yeah, I feel really fortunate that I have that. And I know that yeah, having seen you do that too, where you, like, that's the goal is you want to get called to be like, do you. Right. Yes. You know, even though I think both of us, like you were kind of saying before, both of us is tr have trained and studied, you know, different players and different styles, you know, being mm -hmm. able to sight read, understanding your pedal board. And thank you. You and I did a pedal hang a few years yeah, ago. Yeah, we that did. Fun. That's right. It was really, we got really nerdy. I think I used the pitchfork and all this weird. Yeah, we were having fun. <laughs> that and fun. the Mel 9. Yeah. Um, that's so great. Wait, oh, by the way, so here's my question. What is a yeah. day in the life right now during quarantine? Like music day in the life. What yeah. has that been looking like for you? Um, okay. Okay. Actually. Okay. So I'm, I'll do the thing. Cause you were saying like the first two weeks. Yes. First two weeks I was yes. distraught. Um, but also my younger, it's actually, we have so much in common as I'm talking. Uh, Cause you play with your brother, yes. the fabulous Reeve Carney. And mm -hmm. I make a ton of music with my brother, Sammy Meller, and he's an amazing drummer. So the the two of us went down to my parents' house and quarantined there the first few months. Mm -hmm. Um, 
and just played a ton of music together. We did this thing with his band, Sammy Miller and the congregation called Camp Congregation. So I like wasn't allowed to really fully, I feel like take in and be fully like grieving to the full extent of what was going on. Because mm -hmm. I mean, first of all, no one knew what was going on, but um, I was immediately immersed in a project which was creating uh, educational material with my brother and music content. So we did Camp mm -hmm. Congregation, but then, it, and I also freaked out because like you said, I, you know, both of us play a ton out. We perform. Right. Right. So it's like, wait, I need to pay bills. I, I gotta, yes. I gotta keep this apartment that I live in, you know? Um, so I, I definitely did more teaching and said yes to a ton of work of uh, like recording stuff. And like I was saying before, what I, what I always say and what I realized even more so through this is how community is the most important thing because I, I feel super fortunate even to be here right now, like yeah. talking to you, like, how did this happen? It was like, someone recommended me to someone who works at guitar.com live. And then like, was like, Oh, Molly would be good, good for this. But I had a relationship with them prior to this event. Uh, but every, all these, like the Taylor Disney thing was a connection, was a relationship that I built with Taylor and right. like, which was then a relationship that grew from Jason and like everything I've done has started from that just relationships that have happened super mm. organically. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. We're very lucky, aren't we? This LA music community, well, the whole world's music community is really special. I've always loved how inclusive it is and Hey, let's get this gig for you and connect you with that. And you'd be a better fit for this. And I love being a part of stories like that. And I'm, I'm glad to be in your story as well, where we get to, you know, we have so many friends where we're satellites of each other. Yay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the, what were you saying? Oh, you were saying about how you were going to go to Hawaii with Jason Mraz and you were doing all this stuff. Um, and I, I was about to oh, open a show. Yeah. And we were going to open oh, yes. a week and a half at the oh, LGBT center in Hollywood. We were doing hair, the musical and that closed. And I went, huh. And I, oh. mind you, I had consciously planned for nine months prior, not to exit music at all, but to much more focus on acting, which is something I've taken basically a 20 year hiatus from. I was just yeah. watch, I was watching some Broadway shows in New York with my girlfriend and going, you know, th this, a part of my soul has been unspoken for because I have not been doing acting in some form. I'm going to go to UCB. I'm going to yeah. go to Howard Fine's acting class. I'm going to go to HB Studio. I'm going to read Uta Hagen's book. I'm going to dive back in. So I was planning on exiting touring music for the next decade just to focus wow. on acting. And then uh, I did hair, got hair, you know, it was one of the couple auditions I did and it got booked and, and then was doing it. And then it closed on, what is happening? What the heck? So it was a real, a real shock to my system too. When, when things yeah. shut down and I immediately went, okay, well, if you look at the studio here, clearly music, whenever I walk in my studio to learn my lo acting lines, obviously I'm reminded about music all day, every day. So that's, let's go back into that. Cause what am I going to do? Do a bunch of zoom readings right now. I've been doing those too. Yeah. But th that's not a way to generate income. So I right away said, hey, who wants to do some lessons discounted because of COVID. And then yeah. now that's turned into if someone wants to do a lesson with me live on my Twitch stream, which is really fun oh, actually, whoa. then I'll discount it so that I'm still on Twitch streaming. And then sometimes the chat has questions too. So I'll do that now versus the full price for, you know, an actual private lesson. Um, and then I started streaming concerts on Twitch and that became like a whole, it's so stressful, like getting your whole <laughs> gear together for it. But uh, now that it's ready and ready for prime time, I do it three to five days a week. And it, it you know, what I've turned it into is, I'm producing my tracks that I've been waiting on for six years because I'm touring. I'm finishing yeah. them live on stream. So they watch me do lead vocals on my songs and get ready yeah. to shop them. So it's, it's really showed, fun. You showed me a couple of those songs and they are stellar. Are you writing more right now? Like, cause it, it, you have a platform to perform all this stuff you've been working on. Right. That's a good, I haven't quite finished writing. Last night I was playing some piano stuff, some really super out there voicings that you and I can't do on the guitar. It's like, right now I want to write again because I'm inspired N nerdy real quick nerd moment I had this voicing that I play that I just I stumbled my hands onto the keyboard and I went whoa this isn't possible on guitar um what? it was it was G C sharp D okay A sharp B F so it's basically a bizarre flat five sharp nine chord cool. but it's spelled with half step intervals so like C sharp D uh. is the flat you know sharp 11 to flat five yeah. and then a sharp B is like right next to the major third, minor third. Um, it sounds so like 12 tone row kind of weird oh. serialism stuff. And I was like, Oh, and 
and I started playing other chords. So it, I've just barely been getting there. But to be frank, I, I was too depressed and confused the first few months to do anything other than perform live. And basically, I went on tour for three months on Twitch. You know, like this was get on tour. I know how to do that. I know how to play to people. And and Twitch, I, I will say what's been fun about Twitch, because I think I'm trying to find positives during this time to stay afloat, not just financially, but emotionally. I definitely miss playing in front of people. I miss playing a Rick and hearing someone go, woo. You know, no one says woo. If I, <laughs> I miss those moments. Um, but I uh, I found new ways to connect, and I, I could never do this on stage. So if I get a certain amount of subscribers per stream, I do an improvised comedic musical. What? They pick, yeah, they pick a word. I use my UCB training. I do a half an hour improvised musical. That's fun. Um, Wait, that's so cool. You got to You got to hang out on these. I need to get Twitch because I want to yes. go to your show. And I'll bring you on it. We can do collaborative streams just like this on Twitch. Um, I'll do um, I'll do uh, music theory of gaming, which I think I'm the only person doing that online right now. So I take iconic games and then analyze the structure and harmony and emotional impact of the compositions. <laughs> I mean, this is amazing. Yeah. So I do Sonic. We just did Sonic the Hedgehog, and everyone's like, "Oh, it's so fun." I'm like, "Well, actually, it's this, it's actually a, a hardcore acid jazz record done 16 bit." So <gasps> they had a limit with their sound cards and. We talk about timbre and tone and harmony. Uh, yeah. I do improvise scores. So they'll pick a horror movie from back in the day if I get a certain yeah. amount of subs. And then I yeah. do an improvised score with all my Dude. tools. It's super nerdy. So it's helping me scratch that itch of like, I've always been a video game nerd, always been a tech nerd. And now I've kind of found my community. So I'm finding the positives in this, in this crazy time. And I'm grateful that I have the resources and audience to just go in and do it. Yeah. Um, but I'm trying to spread the love. I got Charles on Twitch, my roommate, Charles Jones. I'm like, get on Twitch, dude. And then he got second place in this huge competition on Twitch that we both took part in. He has a huge audience. It's like trying to get all my friends on Twitch because I'm, and just streaming in general, because it's, I'm sorry, I'm being verbose, but I think it's really fun. No, I think that's great. It's so cool to hear you talk. I, like, I think of this thing being the constant student where it's never like, okay, cool, I'm good at guitar. So what's up next? But instead it's like, right. what sort of opportunities can I create? And the, the coolest thing is like exactly what you're saying. It's not just about like, what can I create for me, but about the community? What can you mm -hmm. create for a bunch of people to participate in? Totally. I was talking to, to my girlfriend about that because she does a lot of different incredible things. Um, she, but yeah, one of her things is she's like, an, I shouldn't even be talking. I'm saying private stuff, but she's an incredible, brilliant, intellectual She's Dr. Molly Miller, you're an intellectual. She's an, it's, you know, very smart. And we were talking about um, the process of um, of uh, musical journeys, and she realized she's like, Zane, a lot of your journey has been like handing. How, how did she put it? She's like, you've all, your community seems like it's all about supporting. Was the point she made? Like, no yeah. one in LA that I know of is saying, ah, let me keep this gig for myself. It's like, oh yeah, you're looking for a guitar player. Oh, my friend might be good. And now that guitar player who shall remain nameless is like a huge person. And oh yeah, this guy jammed with that guy. And I think if you two met, you'd be best friends. And I love being a part of that. I'd much rather that than like this thing. Yeah, it's so true. I, I really find that about the LA community and just the, the music community in general. It's like, yeah. there is room for all of us. And I think the more we have that in our heads, uh, like the richer the community is. Totally. Also, am I making this up or have, I know you're friends with Ryan Lerman, but have you done Scary Pocket stuff as well yourself? I haven't. Okay, but you, but I know you guys have done collaborations in different ways, right? Different I mean, people in that we've, community? We've, we've, like a lot of the people like that are in the Scary Pockets world, like Kenton Chen, who I know is doing yes. hair with you. I He's one of my, my besties that, and mm -hmm. we play a ton of music together. Yeah, like Jesse Peo. Uh, oh, Jesse. There's like so many people in the Scary Pockets world that I also work with and play with. It's a small, you know, it feels really intimidating. Like, okay, so I was like 18 years old at USC, freshman at USC. And I remember you came and did a master class right. and Carney played and it's it's so cool to be here now talking to you thinking about that because i remember seeing mm -hmm. you and just like not only my jaw dropped seeing oh. the way you played and also like your positive attitude and energy and how clear yeah it was like he has it all figured out and has it so together Wait, i don't even know where i'm going with oh this. the good news is though i don't but thank you for thinking that child <laughs> well, acting served me well <laughs> it's fooled you oh <laughs> god think, but that is actually also the truth i think we're all always pretending to know what we're doing because totally. it, 
yeah like the it and i think this the the impersonator syndrome you know like every time i get called for something half the time it's like wait don't they know i i don't know how to play guitar and i and right. I, I i'm I, i'm a loser i don't know anything why are they calling me well i've had i've had i have a friend who's an incredible actor and and that person was saying, uh, yeah, if I, if I don't act for a month or so and I get back on set, I go, why, why did they hire me? I, I don't even know what these words mean. There's no way I'll ever memorize this. Yeah. I'm ashamed. Don't they know? Yeah. But it's funny how people who have been lucky to work consistently have that unfortunate psychological uh, issue. I, I, I have that for sure. I mean, you know, I'm sitting here. I was looking over my finances because I, I just bought a Mac Pro because long story short, I know there are other solutions. I could get an AMD Threadripper. I could get like an NVIDIA 3080. T I've learned all these nerdy things for streaming. And all that, but I need something that's absolutely silent in the space that I currently have, which yeah. isn't, a per this was never intended to be a recording studio. This place was intended to be a fun place to hold my gear, to practice, to be inspired, to look out my backyard and enjoy life, you know, in between tours, because that was yeah. my life. And now I'm going, okay, the walls are thin. There's a gardener in each yard every day. And uh, oops, I need to get like some sort of gear that doesn't even involve mics on my amp temp when it's late at night. And, okay, and I need a computer that can fit in the actual studio and be absolutely silent, hence a Mac Pro. So I've been looking at that and just, you know, specking it out and, and just thinking, okay, well, now that I have a Mac Pro coming, which I'm, you know, yeah, okay, so now it's time to really focus on scoring because... Yeah. I, anyway, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself or, or I'm being uh, kind of verbally going all over the place. But I guess the point is to bring it back to this theme, I guess, of how do we make music in quarantine? And I'm looking at it this way. I am I love science. There's a chance this will all be back to normal in six months. There's a chance it might be five years. I mean, as far as sold out shows again, hopefully yeah. it's closer to six months. But I'm looking at it saying we don't know yet. What if it is longer? Well, I'd like I need to be making music no matter what because i love it too much yeah so i'm gonna I'd reach out to friends about scoring content and uh i'll finish my own solo records and shop them to labels and i'll keep doing twitch and being educational on there and nerdy and <laughs> so I, I think diversifying is kind of the key word for this yeah. and I, I know you're able to do that because you've spent so much time caring about the craft of music so you're able to do anything really well, I, I'm trying because like listening to you talk, it feels like there's so much clarity though within your decision making. Even though I mean, maybe in the moment it feels like it's kind of like I don't know what I'm doing. Like you know, even speaking for myself, it's like I guess I'll get this, and I think I hope, but who knows? But there is still like you're kind of hovering towards this direction and these goals, and like taking a step back to be like, well, what is the landscape right now? What mm. skills do I have? Where do I want to be? Right. And then lean, looking at the community, like diversity, community, and resilience. I feel like those are like the things I keep thinking about. And also That's enthusiasm. Great. Like, yeah. like I, I feel like both of us have, like, when I'm out, I have so much energy. I just like, I'm like, go, let's do this. Let's go. Yeah, let's play. Woo. And I feel like you're like that. And you have more. And I love it. I uh, like the energy. You know what? Thank you. Well, I think we both have that. I see it. I see that joy and that enthusiasm in your playing. When I watch a video of you, I go, oh, Molly is really enjoying this. Most people before they meet me think that I'm like this skit, like Duh. when I worked at Spider Man on Broadway, I walked in and I I was helping all the dance rehearsals and I remember all the girls especially going like oh, just that that guy. Hey guys, yeah, you wanna play some Game Boy Pokemon or you wanna <laughs> What? You're that kind of guy? You look like this demon on stage. Oh no, no. It's just Oh my just, god. Just childhood acting wounds. It's fine. Oh it's but, like funny. I think of you as like the nicest guy ever, you know, and like, like buoyant and kind and like a killing musician and you like tip. Yeah. But oh, that's well, so that's funny. nice of you. But I, I think in general, I, I love that you express that enthusiasm. I, I'm, there's so much, God, I wish this conversation could be three hours. And and by the way, hopefully in the future we can do something like this. It's longer. I, I'm one of the only musicians and comedians. I'm not a comedian, but you know, everyone has a podcast. I don't have one yet. I probably should start one. Yeah. Yes. I don't know. When are you going to start your podcast? I want to come on. I, uh, it's funny. I was talking, you know, Jason Traddick of premier guitar. Oh, that name sounds familiar. I'm going to be doing his podcast chasing frets next week. Amazing. So you better chase them frets. Yeah. Don't, don't, you better chase them frets. I'm don't catch up to them. Just yeah. after they got to catch up to me. That <laughs> just kidding. definitely not. I'm always trying to be like, wait for me. I'm just, I'm just a step away, please. Oh yes, I hear you on that. 
<laughs> um, but no, this is so great. I think we only have five minutes left, but I questions. guess, yeah, the, should we look at some questions? Is that I okay feel, to our- Yeah, or if there are any, I feel like I should have, we should have, or whatever, like 24, five minutes ago, been like, hey, if anyone has right. questions, ask questions. But then feel we just free. started talking because I just like talking to you. But if there's questions, right. ask away. And if there's any on your Twitch stream, I guess yes, we just- I'm learned. looking right now. Yeah, my Twitch stream's about a minute behind. And if you guys have any questions on Twitch, please pop them in. Um, I'm just looking through things today. Uh, that's funny. Today's stream, Zane and Molly try to one-up each other with compliments. That's one of the oh, chat God. comments. Yeah, we've been coming <laughs> there. Uh, Sweet, Car Sweet Caroline. Someone's asking me to sing Sweet Caroline. That's just someone on Twitch being funny and, and goofy. Uh, are, are you still – wait, because I actually have a question. Because I, when we hung, I remember you talking about, like, shedding. You're like, oh, yeah, I still, like, shed giant steps and, like, we went after that i was like every now and then i'll like dive in and like practice giant steps at all these different bpm because of our conversation yes. um the constant student i'm guessing you still are practicing a ton and working on your vocals like constantly that's working a great on your question craft. vocals more than anything yeah so it's weird i mean i think i think the idea of if someone would if this interview between us and the title of it were how to become a famous artist. I'd say, I don't know. I have a lot of friends who've done that. I've play, you play with those people. I've played with them. I'm working on my solo career to hopefully one day be more uh, known. Yeah. I have no idea though. I don't know. But if someone said, how do you make a living at music? I go, Oh, that I think I know how to do. And the well, number one thing to me has always been the Steve Martin approach, which is just don't focus so much on getting the gigs as on getting better. So yeah. I just like, what can I improve on? So I've had students, you know, private students during this quarantine and, and before who said, well, do I really need to sight read? And I say, no, you don't need, you don't need to play guitar, actually. I mean, you don't need to do anything. But do you enjoy it? Because I, I personally love learning new things. And I think that's the main reason that if someone says I need a guitar player for a session, great. Well, I know when I come in and so do you, if they say that voice is a little too low, I can quickly go up my triads. If they say, can you make it sound milkier? I can put on different types of delays. If they say... Uh, do a solo to shred. Okay, well, what do they mean by shred? What yeah. do you mean, Jimi Hendrix? You mean Steve Ray Vaughan? No, like your Zane thing, your Molly thing. <laughs> okay, yeah, that I know how to do. So that's a tool, you know, that comes from practicing or and caring about the craft. But then yeah. someone else might call during this COVID time and say, I need, I need a vocal production. I say, great. I love arranging because I love classical music and jazz theory and I sing. So I can send you 10 tracks in a second with a vocal production that you'll now mimic remotely yeah. cool so that's another way to make an income as a musician oh hey uh i need to have a string quartet but i i need them to play it but I, they don't arrange okay i'll arrange it so i think the number one thing to have a diversified music career in a time like this where live performance isn't as much of an option is every day finding out what i can get better at so yeah yes. that, that has been my focus it's been mostly vocal um because i'm singing a lot on twitch uh and i'm a singer mostly these days actually um then focusing on my music theory because I teach music theory of gaming. Like, oh, don't mess this up. <laughs> I love that you how do to, that. How to parallel fifths work? Like, how should I spell this chord technically? If it's a German augmented six chord, technically there should be an augmented six, not a dominant seven. Because I know there will be a, a, a nerd in chat going, technically it's, you know, <laughs> D sharp to C, sh whatever. It's like, yes, technically it is. Not you know, an E that, flat, it's a D sharp. Exactly. Technically, you're right. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so things like that uh, come up. Um, but yeah, I don't know. That's always been my guiding light, caring about growing and learning, because I'm totally. obsessed with figuring out how things work out. Yeah. So over to you. How, how does it work yeah. for you? Well, I totally agree with that sentiment, because I always say, like, I think the, ha like, it, it, it used to be daunting, and now it's exciting, the fact that it's like, I'll never be a master of guitar. I'll never be the best educator. I'll never be the best at anything or like, be, but it's like, I can, and it's exciting that you always get to grow. So yeah, every day I'm like, you know, if I don't get to practice, I get bummed out if I don't get, so I start yeah. practicing. Um, I wrote some curriculum for Los Angeles college of music, that string theory book. So I've been like working Great. in those string theory books, getting those better. Um, my solo project, trying to Molly Miller trio. I have an album coming out next year and like, not just being done with it, but like writing new songs for it. And it's Great. like, the, I think the, the fact that we can grow is exciting. Yes, I, I'm so with you. By the way, we have our first question from Gerald Hooper asking, have you heard of artists beginning the, to book new tours? If so, when are most of them starting? I, I personally have not. I mean, I've seen people promoted on Instagram, October, 
and, yeah. and I always see that those posts were from June when we didn't know that that wasn't going to happen. So I, I have not. Have you heard anything about that, Molly? I've had some murmurs about stuff 2021. Um, I feel like the earliest people are really booking like major tours is probably summer. I heard some right. talk about spring, but and God, I hope it's right. I think a lot of it depends on what happens over the next couple of months. So, yeah. but I did like I've been doing. Have I've been playing live a little bit like outside social distance stuff? How about Same. you? Same. Yep. So I started doing this weekly gig with one of my best friends, Greg Blum, who we spoke about. Uh, a friend from high school who's an amazing drummer and he writes the best kids music of all time, like jazz fusion kids music. It's amazing. Um, and so we, we do this outdoor thing with my girlfriend singing, uh, Adriana Stan and then Greg Blum on drums. Uh, and then Aiden Moore from Carney has been playing bass and it's just on the lawn that he, ha he organized it with the city. So we can, with guys from yeah, it's on the West side. They block off the street and you I'm just coming. walk it. Yeah, totally come. And then people just stand like 35, 40 feet away in their own little pockets. Wow. Um, and this guy's a jazz lover and a music promoter. So he's just paying, you know, people to come play on his front lawn, basically. That's incredible. That, that's been really special. Um, but most of it's been uh, digital, which I, I still got to figure this thing out. Um, there's a guy named Dan Tepfer in New York who's figured out a way to play live with less than 10 milliseconds of latency with mm -hmm. people who live within 10 to 15 miles of him. Wow. So he's been doing jazz concerts in New York with people from Brooklyn, live yeah. streaming perfectly, like no perceived latency. Yeah. So that's going to be the next frontier for me, I think, is finding a way to jam with you because we were both in L.A. We should be able to make this work. Yeah. So I, had, figuring that out. I had my first public gig a couple nights ago with Kyle Crane. And actually, that's how we got reconnected. It was one of his gigs. I played at Urban Radish and it that's was right. like to play with people and for me, I think that like the the playing is obviously so exciting to do with people, but also the post show hang. Because I I don't know how you feel, but I always get so depressed when it like the the show ends and then I'm alone in my apartment looking at a light in my computer screen. Right, right. That's been hard. I mean, also par part of what's been hard is the music community. We're so open hearted and and touchy. Like, hey, hug. Hey, buddy. Was a long time no see. Yeah. And right now, that's been hard when the gig starts. Okay, how do we? I know. Yeah. Hey, man. And it's tough about finding that balance of when I'm home alone, I'm very lucky that I live with a roommate and a partner, but when I'm home alone, I feel um, on the days where I'm actually alone, it's, ah, oh, it sucks. But then when I hang out with people, the anxiety is so high. Uh, the only practice I've gotten before COVID on this is I used to do voice rest a lot because I mm. needed vocal surgery and hadn't figured that out yet. And so I would, um, yeah, I remember having to be awkward in front of people. So I've been tapping into that, but it's, yeah, I'm very much looking forward to a adapting even more so to this new normal. And then B when things lift to where we're kind of okay. I think, I think that's going to happen. I just hope yeah. it's clear. I know. Me yeah. too. I saw the. It's hard. I just looked, saw the time. Yes. And I know you also have a show in a couple hours that we should tell people about. Yes. Yeah, so I'm playing here on guitar.com at 6 PM. So in about two hours and I'll be simulcasting to my Twitch audience to bring them over. Um, and yeah, it'll be a 30 to 45 minute full concert featuring the new guitar that was just announced today. So did you hear about this heritage custom core H one fifty? Awesome. So it's right there. It's very nerdy, but, um, they, uh, they sent it to me to play on this show, and I'm very excited. It's these are some of the best pickups I've ever heard in a solid body guitar like this. So, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna play today and get nerdy, and I'll be singing high notes like uh, you know one of those guys, one of those guys who hits the sad weird high notes. I'll be Did doing that. Sometimes uh, depends on the day. <laughs> <laughs> Zane, it was so nice talking to you. I can't wait to like play guitar and talk silly theory and giant steps with you. Oh, soon. speaking of which, can you come on as a guest on the music theory of gaming? Cause you're theory nerd. Obviously okay, we'll do that. And then we'll do other nerdy things and play music. I'm in. I, 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 yeah, I chose to go to school for nine years. Like, yes, I love being nerdy. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, I can't wait. Is there anything coming up for you that we can look out for? These, these new Disney things are coming out. Yeah, the new Disney things, and I, the album has definitely been a focus for what's on the horizon. There's some other songs coming out, but I think, yeah, stay tuned for the Molly Miller Trio album. How about you? Yeah, I have a, a – I'm not sure when we'll be announcing it or how – I yeah, long story short, I have a quartet record I did with Jerry Watts, Gene Coy, and Katice Buckingham. Ah, uh, Jerry's – Yeah, he's insane. So that, that'll that be in the next six months to a year. That We'll find a proper way to release that. And then, um, yeah, I'll just be on Twitch. You know, I think it's – 
right now my schedule is Tuesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays at least on Twitch doing uh, concerts, live learns, music theory, game, and all that. It's just twitch.tv slash Zane Carney. So that's how you can find me. Um, and you're on Instagram at Mo Moody, Moody Mill. Moody Mill. <laughs> so uh, I love following you and seeing all your brilliant. You're just so brilliant. I just You're one of my favorite guitar players, Molly. I, I know uh, I told you that a couple years ago, but it's still true. I my whole everything i just melted i don't know if you can see but my insides melted because i'm such a mega fan of yours so thank you i talk about you all the time you can ask my girlfriend i talk i'm like oh yeah they're because i love you know um adam levy i love you i love blake mills i love people oh. who care about God. the nuance of the and the, i just love your plan so i love your playing and those Thanks, people Mom. that you just mentioned uh we'll, we'll have to do a distant hang too i want to meet, meet your lady yes i would love that okay we both would love that and we'll we'll see the rest of you guys tonight at 6 p.m. Yes. And we'll all be uh, seeing you uh, releasing your trio record when it comes out soon, Molly. Sweet. Well, awesome. All bye right. GuitarLive.com. Bye, Zane. I'll see you soon. See you soon, Molly. Bye, all. All right. We're clear.